this is a colon. This is a colon that has been opened up and you're looking at the mucosal surface. These are the little submucosal extensions which increase the surface area of the colon just like the plicae and the rugae do in the stomach, you have the counterparts in the colon as well. Notice that in most areas, even though there is some waviness or wrinkliness because of these uh, submucosal uh, folds, that most of the surface area itself is nice and uniform. However, there's an area here, 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 and maybe here, and probably here, in which you can see a polypoid thickening of the mucosa. Whenever you see uh, what looks like perhaps normal mucosa, but it looks like it's kind of a berry or a polyp that you could pick, this would inherit the name polyp. These are colon polyps. There's two kinds of colon polyps. There's the ones that are completely benign and never turn into cancer, and they're called hyperplastic polyps. And then there are the kind called uh, adenomatous polyps, which sometimes do turn into cancer, especially if they are long standing. Uh, but many of the adenomatous never do. This is a hyperplastic polyp. This will never turn into cancer. Notice there is a thickening of the mucosa. Notice there is a persistence of a nice uh, uniform uh, line of muscularis mucosa. Notice the submucosa extends as the stalk of the polyp and you could get your normal vascular and lymphoid uh, aggregates in the submucosa. But, uh, the most important feature that differentiates this as a hyperplastic polyp is the fact that in many of these glands, the lumen, like here and here, is kind of jagged, or what they call serrated, and here and here. And that's really one of the classic diagnostic features of a, a benign hyperplastic polyp. But what's even more important than learning buzzwords like serrated is to notice that when you do uh, look at the so-called normal colonic uh, epithelium, you see an abundant amount of mucin and goblet cells. Here's a whole bunch here. Here are absorptive cells. Here are goblet cells. Here's a mixture of goblet and absorptive. Generally speaking, the closer down you get distally, the more uh, goblet you get and the less absorbent you get. Now, when you go into the same glands of the polyp, notice you have basically the same thing. You have a nice mixture of these mucinous goblet cells and the non-mucinous absorptive cells. Also notice that the muscularis mucosa still delineates the uh, mucosa from the stalk of the submucosa. Uh, that's all I wanted to say about this. Uh, and so therefore, I'm not going to say any more.